Hi everyone, this is Mike at Brash Monkey, and in this video I'm going to show you the great new features available in Sprite Release B8. First off, I should mention that all of these features will be available in both the free and the pro version of Spriter. The first time you run Spriter V8, you will see a pop-up that looks like this. And you'll see that Spriter now has an auto uh, update uh, system, which will automatically check if you want it to. I'm going to check here. Automatically check for stable updates when I load Spriter. Uh, so that way you won't have to uh, guess or go to our website and uh, download Spriter or check out our forums to see if there's a new update. Spriter will check for you automatically and let you know. And if there is one, it'll give you a link directly to the download page. So now on to actual workflow related features in uh, the new version of Spriter. Um, let's say you're an artist that wants to create their uh, animations for their characters or effects in a different program, but still use uh, or gain from the benefits of Spriter uh, in that they can uh, set up collision boxes, sound effect triggers, variable changes, and things like that within Spriter. Uh, well, now there's a much more automated way to get your pre-rendered frame-by-frame animations into Spriter. So whether you've created your sequential image frames for your character or effect in um, a 3D program or a 2D program, in this case a 2D pixel art program, um, once you have them in your Spriter project folder, um, you can, let me show you this quickly here. First, I'm going to set up, so we have these full frame images for an idle animation for a fighting game character. Okay, so I'm just going to very quickly set the default pivot point to something that makes sense. Uh, and then I'm going to copy that default pivot point and then paste that default pivot point to these frames as well. So now if I check, they all have the pivot point in the exact same place. Okay, and now I can select all of these frames. There we go. Uh, and now if I right click, there's a new option, import selected images as new object. And I can set the start time. If I want this to be the start of a brand new animation, I leave it at zero milliseconds. And then the end time will make it um, 1,000 milliseconds. So it takes exactly one second. Um, there we go. Uh, and then it says here, as you can see, drag the image below onto the canvas to set its initial position. So we're just going to drop that right there. And now you'll see when I press play, we've got the perfectly animated character all set, ready to go in Spriter. Every frame was put in the right position. Uh, nice and easy. Since this character is pixel art, it's a great way to segue into the next new uh, feature in Spriter, and that is pixel art mode. So as you can see, this is a very low res, uh, 16 color uh, animated character, um, as you would see in traditional classic arcade games or Super Nintendo games, things of that sort. Uh, what if you were working on a game where you wanted to maintain that crisp, sort of uh, every pixel being nice and clean and, and standing out on its own? Um, now there's a, there's, if you, look up here in the menus, there's a new menu section called Modes, and watch what happens here on the screen when I choose Pixel Art Mode. You'll see we now have no filtering when we zoom in and out, so you can work with, you can see the absolutely exact pixels and colors that you're working with, um, and it's just much easier now to, uh, to work with very low resolution things. Uh, I should mention also uh, things like uh, bones have had their selection improved, so it's much easier when you have very small sprites or many small bones near each other, it's much easier to select the proper bone. But of course, just turning off the filtering while you're in Spriter is not enough to really call it a pixel art mode. So what else does pixel art mode do? Well, the other really critical aspect to a pixel art mode is that it can't let you position sprites in um, in sort of positions halfway between pixels because what that's going to do is force a game engine to um, 
to filter the uh, the image in order to sort of interpolate the half pixel positions of, of all of the pixels. Uh, and you'll notice now when I move this sprite that it's moving in per pixel increments no matter how much I zoom in. When I move it, it's moving exactly one pixel up, down, left, or right. And another new feature I should point out that is especially handy when you're in pixel art mode, let's make sure I'm in pixel art mode, yes I am, is that you can um, lock your rotations. So especially if you want to maintain perfectly clean um, pixel art, you don't want to just arbitrarily rotate things to any given angle because you're going to get uh, things that look less cleaned up, right? Because it's just sort of shifting pixels over or up and down to create the uh, the rotation. Same thing with scale, right? It's just either adding whole columns and rows of pixels or removing them, right? So um, when you're really animating and you want to maintain perfectly pure pixel art without it getting a little um, unpolished, then you can turn on this uh, little um, angle locking here. So now when I go to rotate the sprite, you'll see uh, I started at angle zero. When I rotate it, it's going to lock to four perfect 45 de degree increments. So now, there you go. So obviously any uh, perfect 90 degree inc increment is going to represent the original image perfectly intact with every pixel exactly where it belongs, just rotated. Um, whereas 45 degree angles uh, will usually look quite clean, but a little less perfect, um, depending on what type of image it is. Like obviously if it were something with very straight lines, uh, it would maintain a very high, very clean uh, quality, but obviously 90 degree increments will remain absolutely perfect uh, pixel art exactly as the artist had created it. And uh, finally, in regard to this uh, new pixel art mode, uh, the last great feature is very often when you're animating very small objects, um, uh, animating pixel art objects, you're working in a, in a very zoomed in manner, but it's also really good to be able to see what you're working on at the actual one-to-one -one pixel ratio somewhere on the screen. And you'll see now there is a, under Windows, a second view. And now, and by default, it's at 1x zoom. And you can see that I can now keep this window. I can sort of dock it anywhere I want or just put it off to the side here. And you can see that I can move things around. Let's say this character were made out of multiple body part images. I can work on my animation frames. Um, nice and zoomed in, but always just glance over here to see how it's actually looking at the, the actual intended screen resolution. And here it is, click and play. You can see the nice crispy pixels. No blurring, no filtering. And right here, you can see, I can uh, use this navigator to scroll around to the zoomed area to see exactly what I want to uh, tweak or see how the actual details look zoomed in. Oops, I just remembered one more thing about pixel art mode that uh, I should point out before I move on to the next feature. Uh, and that is, as you would expect if you're working in pixel art mode, here's a pixel art scene that, uh, that we were working on. And you'll see this, when I drag along the timeline, the top of this uh, building here so, sort of comes off and hovers like it's sort of a flying saucer. Uh, and you'll see, um, when I actually click play, that this object is indeed, even when being tweened, limiting its movement to actual whole pixel locations uh, or coordinates. It cannot, um, it cannot tween into partial pixel coordinates and therefore force uh, filtering or, or blurring. So there you go, creating actual pixel art animations in Spryder. So the next thing I'd like to cover in Spryder version B8 is the improvements to the export PNG functionality. Let's say you've just finished this uh, sort of balance check animation, uh, and we want to export it so that as sequential image frames so that it can be used in a game engine that does not uh, support 
Sprayer's uh, actual data format immediately. So what you would do is go fi choose File, Export to PNG, and then set a destination folder in file name. We'll call this Cliff Edge. Save. Now it's updating the uh, the box for the animation, or basically how it would be trimmed. Um, and then, so as you can see, this dialog has grown a bit with some new features. Uh, you can set, of course, uh, I've already made a video on the basics of this, but uh, we can just tell it how many images we want the animation to take. Um, so there you go, that would be 12 frames per second. So you can either set the FPS or set the number of images or tell it only export the keyframes, whatever's more appropriate for that particular animation. And then here's where the new stuff comes in. For the output file, form, file options, uh, you can choose uh, separate images, which was the default before, but now you can also choose sprite strip or, sprite, or, or sprite sheet. Uh, and by default, it's a sprite strip uh, of all the frames stuck together horizontally. But obviously here I have 24 images, so I could change the vertical number of frames to two. So now it's 12 by two. Or if I want to make that more even, obviously I could do something like uh, six by four. Uh, and again, just like in the old video I showed, you can uh, change the scale so you could reduce it to 50% or enlarge it to 200%, whatever you need to do while you're exporting. We're going to leave it at 100% just to show you how this looks. And then now it's doing the exporting. And let me go back to my desktop and you can see we have this cliff edge sprite sheet uh, with all of the frames nicely uh, arranged. Um, and another really important uh, improvement to uh, Spriter's PNG export um, feature is that before it was not cropping the images perfectly to the transparent pixels, and now it does. So now it's uh, much more optimized in that regard as well. And before we move on to the next feature, uh, there's one thing you might be thinking about, especially if you're a pixel artist, but what about pixel art mode? And uh, this is really important if you're working on pixel art. Let's go to pixel art mode. And you can see now that we're seeing the actual um, actual colors, actual pixels of the character. And even when it's rotated, it's, uh, it's point filtered, so it's never inventing new colors. This particular set of images the character is made by add alpha blending. So any alpha blending you see there is just part of the actual original sort of palette and colors. So if, if these images were actual pixel art to begin with, there would be no uh, semi-translucent edge, edge pixels there. But anyway, the point is, if we want to uh, export this character's frames uh, in pixel art mode, then uh, whatever mode we're in, we do choose to export. The actual export is going to use the same exact mode and filtering to export the images. So I'll export this to the desktop as well, and we'll call this pixel art mode. Go and we're going to make it uh, 12 images. There we go. And we're going to make it a sheet. And we're going to make that sure. Uh, we'll make it 4 by 3 just so you can see how this looks. Here we go. It's now pixel art mode. Here we go, when we zoom in, you can see it's got the actual um, non-filtered body part images. It's, uh, anyway, it, it maintains the actual pure pixel art. And there's one last feature I need to mention before I sign off, and that's what if you um, want to enjoy the crispness and non-filtering of pixel art mode without the limitations of pixel art mode, meaning what if you want to be able to um, move things and have them tweened uh, in, in between the pixels instead of only whole pixel coordinates. Uh, if you look up here in modes, these are sort of not either or. Um, they are um, 
actual checkboxes that can be turned off on and off. So we can actually just go up here, even though we're not in pixel art mode, uh, first make sure you're in smooth sampling mode, and then just choose it to turn off smooth sampling. So now we have no filtering. When we zoom in, we can see the actual pixels, but we can still move things in between pixel coordinates. You can see here, uh, 23.548, you know, that sort of thing. And when movements are tweened, as you can see here, they're tweened, uh, they're not limited to whole pixel coordinates. And that's it. Uh, thanks a lot for watching.